Titan is the um, second uh, novel about Cicero and the politics of ancient Rome. It follows on from my novel uh, Imperium, but you don't have to have read Imperium in order, I think, to read uh, Titan, which is a self-contained story. Uh, it covers five years. The first part of the book describes um, Cicero's consulship in 63 BC when he was running uh, the Roman Empire and he had to deal with a conspiracy against the state organised by the nobleman Catalina who was backed by Crassus, the richest man in Rome, and also by the young Julius Caesar. Uh, and the first part of the book describes how Cicero, armed really with nothing except the power of oratory, managed to defeat Catalina's conspiracy. But he only did so at a price, uh, which was putting to get to death five men illegally. And the second part of the book covers four years, and those are the years in which Cicero's um, position gradually unravels. The book is a kind of Greek tragedy really about a politician, a great man who um, performs an act for the best of motives but who is uh, ultimately destroyed by his own good intentions. Uh, the book is filled with big characters, um, men like Cicero himself, Julius Caesar, uh, Gnaeus Pompeius Magnus, the great Roman general, uh, Crassus, the richest man uh, in Rome at that time, uh, Catalina, uh, Clodius uh, and Cato uh, and all these men um, fight for power and the book is an attempt to uh, look at what makes men want to have power and the endless uh, corruption and tragedy and triumphs that attend political careers and for me this is a way of uh, both bringing to life ancient Rome but also uh, acting as a commentary on our own modern politics. I worked as a political journalist in uh, Britain uh, and wrote a, um, a very much political book uh, called Ghost which came out a couple of years ago. Uh, my aim in these novels, um, Imperium and Titan, is to um, try to universalise uh, the drama and excitement of politics. That is, if I wrote a book about politics in my own native country in England, probably be very boring for a German audience, or let alone an Italian or a French audience. But if I can write about politics set in ancient Rome, which is the fountain head of our, all our democracies and political systems, uh, then it universalises it. And that's what I'm seeking to do. I want to bring ancient Rome to life uh, and describe this extremely sophisticated system, which was in operation 2,000 years ago, of annual elections, of power divided, uh, between two consuls, the uh, eight praetors, the head of uh, the, the various courts of Rome, also all elected, 20 new senators elected each year. I want to describe that annual election process, uh, the battles in the Senate, the manoeuvrings, the voting, how laws were passed, the whole struggle for power uh, in Rome, uh, really to, to give some impression of what it was like to uh, deliver a speech to 2,000 people in the open air without a microphone uh, or to try to talk to 600 senators in the Senate building. So my aim is, uh, is to both is to bring it alive but also by doing so uh, to write about politics in a way that uh, anyone wherever they live uh, can understand. I've always been fascinated by politics, by uh, the drama of it, by the way in which it shows up human nature um, tests men, uh, whether they are courageous or whether they're cowards, their strengths and their weaknesses are all exposed by politics. And not much has changed. Um, Rome was the one great superpower of its day, and we now live in an era of one great superpower. And it seems to me that some of the problems that beset modern America also beset the Roman Republic. Uh, in around 63 to 44 BC, that is uh, the fundamental question, can you be a democracy and a, super, a world military superpower at the same time, or must your political system inevitably be corrupted by the demands of security and the amount of money that's pouring into your political system? So for me, the books are, have this dual function. They are about the past, bringing it alive, but also I hope they're a commentary on the present 
and above all, I should say, I hope they're a good read with all the uh, very vivid characters who I try to bring alive. Um, we're fortunate uh, in this period I'm writing about is in that there were contemporary sources, Plutarch, uh, Suetonius, Sallustus, uh, Cicero himself, Caesar. Um, there, was, there was a lot of written material uh, so that we can reconstruct uh, what actually happened almost daily, sometimes even hourly. Uh, the, the, the fundamental debate uh, in Titan as a debate on the 5th of December 63 BC that took place in the Senate, what to do with these five men uh, arrested uh, as traitors. And we have three of the speeches. We have the speeches of uh, Cicero, Caesar and Cato who have all come down to us. So there's quite a lot of material I could use. And then my job was to bring the characters to life uh, to, to provide their psychological motivation and also to fill in the gaps where the record isn't clear. Uh, that, that was my job and the method I chose of approach to the uh, material was to use the voice of Cicero's uh, secretary, Tira, who was a real life figure who worked with Cicero for 30 years uh, and lived for many years after Cicero's death. And Tiro, wherever Cicero went, Tiro went with him. Their relationship was a bit like Dr. Watson and Sherlock Holmes. Uh, Tiro is the, is the Dr. Watson figure who uh, was in on every meeting and organised things for Cicero and who did in fact uh, write his memoirs. Uh, and so this is a sort of uh, imaginary recreation of what that memoir might have been like because Tiro's memoirs were lost when the Roman Empire collapsed. I think my great advantage is that I uh, did not have a classical education, therefore I'm not one of these people who was forced to read Cicero and ended up hating his guts, because he could be so boring if you had to translate him. Uh, I came to it in a different way and looked at him as a human being and uh, as, a, as, a, as a politician and as a speaker but not as uh, um, an exercise in the classroom. And I think that's been a great advantage to me. Um, I've been I've had to teach myself the whole uh, era. And what I bring to it really uh, is the experience of someone who is a political journalist and uh, knows politicians. And so the thing that I could usefully do was to see how Cicero operated um, practically in his career and uh, shed some light on that aspect of him. I have a great uh, admiration for Cicero, um, who I think was a very um, interesting man, brilliant man, um, sympathetic to a modern reader actually, who, was, um, who rose by the power of his intellect, who didn't have uh, strong family collections, he didn't have money, he wasn't a military man, he was very humanistic, he did not like cruelty to animals at the games and he tried to avoid those. He liked to defend in the law courts rather than prosecute. Um, at the same time he had many flaws. He was quite nervous, uh, he, was, uh, quite, he became quite um, vain and egotistical. Uh, he liked uh, money, um, but for all that um, he was a great man. And I, I, I sympathise with him and I, one of the things I want to do in the books uh, is to rehabilitate him in a way because there's been such focus on Julius Caesar as the great man of the era, uh, that there, but there is another view which is that Caesar was a kind of Napoleon or even a Hitler figure, a dictator who killed hundreds of thousands of people and destroyed a democratic system uh, and in, imposed his own rule. Um, so for me, Cicero is the man who stood against him and tried to fight him, uh, and that makes him interesting to me.